Good day, this is Brad Caleb PhD and my PhD stands for Post Hole Digger. That means that I continue to work on the foundation for the prodigal son and daughter. And why do I spend so much time going over a message that is so important? For the simple reason that it took me now six decades before I finally had realized what was going on. And it took me another decade to pen it down, write it down, understand the concept and have it verified. Folks, we are living in some messy times. And a lot of people say, well, you know, the Bible says this and the Bible says that. But what if it is another situation? There's an anonymous observ observatory. An observatory where we can sit down and analyze what is happening. It's a Christian oxymoron exposed. Another one. Was Trump a Christian or a Russian? Yes, folks, we are talking about restorative justice. While there is a problem, we also have always a solution. And let's find out what that solution can be. When I pose the question, is Trump the ticket to the rapture? Or is Trump the greatest conspiracy besides Emperor Constantine I? We talked about the difference of opinion. There are many people that for some reason figured out that Mr. Trump was the chosen one. But the challenge that I have with that statement, he was a man appointed by God, is there is a difference between a spiritual church and a carnal church. And does one see the hand of God at work in ways not recognized by the people of the simple faith? So in other words, we are seeing the sheep and the goats. Now why is that so sensitive? At the time of Yeshua HaMashiach, that most people know as Jesus, there are several things that happen. A lot of people were informed about a new religion. But it was not a new religion because Yeshua was a rabbi. He was treated as such and they had discussions and were impressed. When I say were impressed, those are the people that were priests themselves, the Sadducees and the Pharisees. But when it became a heated discussion, Yeshua said, you belong to the synagogue of Satan. And today we still see that same synagogue of Satan but now we don't see it only in the Jewish community, we see it in the Christian community. And this is where the problem is. How come that the synagogue of Satan survived 2000 years? Now, going over historic facts, for some of you might not be fun, but the reality is extremely important because when I was in court for almost 20 years, I had lawyers in the beginning and we spent six years over ten million dollars in defense and blah 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 whatever lawyers charge you and then for 12 years I was with my wife in court for 12 years without lawyers 
I don't want to go into details. It was just a matter of a financial transaction where I declined a friend access to the transaction and he got mad. He happens to be the head of the Freemasons. And since then I came to understand that a lot of things are different. They are different than they appear on the surface. And a lot of people say, well, I appear to be a Christian. I'm a nice guy. I'm a nice fellow. I'm a nice lady. I'm acting proper. But the reality is that there is a God that created us. And God, I call it personally, is actually PMS. Father God Almighty used a physical body. He gave Adam and Eve a physical body. He gave them the mental capacity to talk and had a spiritual purpose. Satan, Be Beelzebub, or Lucifer, or the angel of light, knew that God was somebody else. And so what he did with the people that are in this world, he uses PMS too. He uses politics, he uses money, and he uses spirituality or religion. And if you really digest this, you will notice that people are controlled by politics, by money, or by spirituality. That is what I discovered over those 12 years in front of judges, being sentenced eventually for six years. Because no matter what I brought in, even if my intent was right, I was still found guilty because I was the head of the company. I took my lumps and we won on appeal. The details are not important, but what the process taught me was what we need to understand. As I grew up, I studied religion. I studied the Bible. But in essence, I was occupied with religion or spirituality. I was dealing with the PMS from Satan, unbeknownst to myself. I worked in the financial field, did very well, made millions and lost millions. But the reality was, when I worked in the field of Satan, Beelzebub, I was so occupied that I thought I worked as a Christian. And then working in the court for so long, 12 long years, you understand that precedence is important and evidence. What is the evidence that you have that led you to do what you're doing? See, the word of God is not something to fight about. If you believe it and I believe that, then praise the Lord, who cares? When I say who cares, it's not worth it for me to fight or kill you or vice versa, you come and fight and kill me for what you believe to think is right. Because the Bible is given as a key to knowledge. And this is where the big problems start. We have something that is awesome, but we need to understand the power of the knowledge that it contains in the Bible. Many people that are reading the Bible find that the living scripture is a Christian doctrinal gagmire. It is frustrating. It is so complicated. And then the end time, they're talking about this and they're talking about that. But the reality is it is very simple. We got to understand that we belong to a spiritual father. And we became another person when we fell away from God. And so when Jeshua had sacrificed his life on the cross, and that is indeed a couple of thousand years in between, but I don't want to go into details, otherwise watch the video from yesterday. It states very simple that there is a spiritual church and a carnal church. The carnal church will go and kill and do destroy because they are convinced that they are the only ones. Yet the spiritual church is the group of people 
that follows a narrow path. Now, why am I talking about that? Because there are three options. Either you're Jewish or you're not. And if you're not Jewish, you could be Muslim or any one of those other religions, but most of the time it is the Jews, the Christians and the Muslims that are considered to serve a living God, one God. And here's the big difference. When Yeshua gave an example of the love of God, he spoke about the prodigal son. And this is where my first book went about. It went about a fellow that became the prodigal son. I found out that I was not a Christian. I was a prodigal son because what I had learned in court taught me to look for evidence. And the evidence told me that the way I was going, the way I was treated, the way I was as a Christian was not the way, the truth and the light. Because God spoke very clear. He said, Jesua and his disciples. The disciples trained others. And we are supposed to be the followers of the way, the truth and the light. If we can be that, then we are living a spiritual experience or we are in a connected with a spiritual church. If we cannot do that, although we might call ourselves, I'm Jewish, I am Christian, I'm a Muslim, all admirable terms, admirable causes. But what happened? The Jews were the first people that got the covenant. Moses came down with the covenant for the children of light. After Adam failed, there was one person, Enoch, in the seventh generation that walked with God because he learned from his great, 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 great grandfather Adam what it was to deal with God. And then Moses, out of the family tribe there from Abraham, he became the chosen one to lead the people out of Egypt because he became aware of the awesome power of God. And as he delivered the commandments of God, the covenant of God, he found them dancing and drinking and acting like morons. And he broke the covenant. And God said, I will give them now the Ten Commandments so they can choose between life and death. See, the covenant was a whole different aspect, but the Ten Commandments was now simple. This is the law and this is what you do. And that is where the brothers, the Jewish brothers, found a big major problem because they could never fulfill the law because they didn't understand there was a spiritual aspect as Yeshua was the example and they had to follow the way, the truth and the light. Because as we went on that road, as you go are going on that road, you will discover that you are walking in the presence of God. That is why you need to be on the way, the truth and the light. And not just saying, well, I'm a Christian and I'm a very special Christian because I'm a Pentecostal or a Baptistical or what Seventh Adventist or whatever you want to call yourself. Because that is a carnal church. Why am I talking about Christians as carnal? Because the Jewish people rejected Jesua. By rejection, they automatically chose to be a carnal church. Yes, folks. The Christians, after 300 years, after Jesua had sacrificed his life, taught the disciples how to be the children of the light. The emperor of Rome said, forget the nonsense, either I kill you or you become a Roman Catholic. And the people just said, okay, whoopie doo. And now there were pagan Christians. So the spiritual church looked like it was almost killed off. But God always takes care of his own. And so now we have a crypto virus, Pfizer, and it's a Chrono Pfizer. We talked about the unit. It is a unique scenario where the Pope has 53 miles of documents for 1200 years. And he's got books and paperwork from the time that Jesua was around, written in the Aramaic. And I got a couple of books, a hold of some of those books. And I came to understand that you and I today have a chance 
to become a spiritual church. So celebrating Christmas with the carnal church, that is wonderful. But unfortunately, it makes you feel good, but you're not doing what God wants. God wants you to be a spiritual follower of the way, the truth and the light. Then as you are walking on that path, it is a narrow path, you are in the presence of God Almighty and you find out that your restorative justice is taking place. And as you grow and increase, you will learn from God personally how to be a successful spiritual person. I don't say Christian because a Christian is a pagan term for a follower of the God of the underworld. You can bless anything under the moon, but if it is evil, it is evil. But if you have nothing else, God will help you because he is an awesome God and he can make out of stone even a preacher if he has to. So it is up to God himself. But I want to share with you that we need to look for a Christian that is a person that is following the Lord and not a pagan Christian. And since you can only be a pagan Christian, you can't have a choice either choose life or choose death. You either become a follower of the way, the truth and the light. So you become a prodigal son or daughter and therefore you repent and you turn back to the father. And with that comes a tremendous victory because now the Father will personally take care of you and He will teach you, He will share with you what you need to do to deal with the misery that you're facing. And if it is a pandemic or it is a divorce or it is another disease or something else, whatever is impossible with God, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all those other things shall be added unto you. With God, everything is possible for He is our healer. He is our provider. Those are terms you've heard before, but you got to walk in the spiritual church, in the spiritual road. You cannot be a pagan Christian, which is a carnal church. And also, if you are Jewish folks, you have the same problem because a prodigal son, we are all prodigal sons, whether you're Jewish, Muslim, Christian, or a Buddhist, it doesn't matter. As a prodigal son or daughter, we have to return to the Father. And as we return to the Father, He will open your eyes and He will share with you the power of victory. A victory that only can be a spiritual victory. Because the carnal victory is what you have right now. We have Christmas and we can't even get together. You celebrate Christmas and people are fighting and killing each other somewhere around the world. We have Christmas and other people cannot even find food to eat. But if you are in a spiritual environment with God, He shall provide and He will open that path for you because He is our Father, our God, El Shaddai. I wish you all the best, my friends, as you undertake your journey. And remember, tough times never last, but tough people, they do.
Mm-hmm.